Hey guys, super excited to have you for this video. Today is all about the five things that I think will blow your mind about the new F-150 Lightning from Ford. And now, uh, one thing before I get into this is some of the stuff you probably already know, especially if you're an avid uh, internet consumer and you are trying to like dig under every hole, you've probably found this stuff already too. But if you're new to the truck and you want to learn about the five, what I think are possibly some of the coolest things like ever, um, this is a great video for you, especially if you're just starting your journey for the F-150 and your, or the Lightning, F-150 Lightning, and, and you want to learn about the truck, and this is a great place to jump off. So with all that, let's jump into it. So that first number one thing is, uh, oh yeah, another thing is I'm going to probably go in order of like things you probably already know slash least exciting to the most exciting at the very end. So... Um, the first thing is, and it's all over, so you've already seen it, the intelligent backup power. Now, what that is, is this abil this car's ability to be essentially a uh, electric generator slash like Tesla power wall, whatever those are called. Uh, there, it's a backup power system for your house. And now this can let, uh, pr sorry, I'm looking down at notes if you see me looking like a dummy. <laughs> um, so this can give you up to 9.6 kilowatts to power your home up to three days. That's a lot. And that still is with a reserve, like enough battery reserve to get you to work. What, else, what more can you ask for? Um, I won't spend a lot of time. It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. The one caveat to that, though, is you do need a house that can... Uh, plug into it. So um, just know that before you get too excited. I think that's probably obvious, but in case you didn't know, now you do. Okay, the number two reason, and I'm grouping two things in here because they're kind of hand in hand, and it is towing and payload capacity. Now I'm grouping these two in for the main reason that I think a lot of people are hesitant to move to this electric car because they're not sure if it's going to have the same capabilities as their uh, standard uh, ICE vehicle. And now I get that hesitation. And there is some cases, especially if you're traveling a long distance or if you're hauling a long distance, where it might actually still make sense to not go electric. And, and I totally concede that. But for the most part, Ford did a really great job of not only matching what a standard uh, ICE vehicle F-150 can do, but actually exceeding it. And now I have a couple numbers here to back that up. So um, again, there's tons of variations of this. So like if you say my car can actually tow more than what you're saying and it has that engine, you're probably right. I'm just going off Ford's website. So take that as you will. But the 3.3 V6, the ranges of towing that that handles is about 5K to 8.2K. And now that means 2,000 less at the most. It, or at the most, it's 2,000 pounds less than what the Lightning can do. And I, another caveat to that is that is the extended range battery version of the Lightning that's going to be able to do 10,000. So right there, you're beating that version of the F-150. And then the 2.7 V6 that I think is one of the more common engines that come in the uh, F-150, is uh, it's rated from about 7K to 8.6 thousand pounds. Now, Again, it's still not as much as what this, and I, I'm actually curious if the non stand or the non extended battery version of Lightning will be closer to that. That'd be my guess. But it's cool to know that if you're someone who's hauling and, and doing a lot of towing, this is going to be more than capable of that. And you should already know that with the horsepower and torque facts, which we'll get to a little bit later on. Um, the other thing is payload capacity. Like maybe if you're not hauling, you're, I don't know a landscaper even and you just are loading up bags of dirt that that weighs a lot especially if you're filling a whole bed full so the 2.7 uh v6 it, it's a rated for about 1700 pounds of payload um whereas the 3.3 v6 is closer to 1985 pounds and the payload of the lightning is actually 2000 pounds so that's pretty cool that you know it's not that much more but at all but it at least is in the same realm and you're not losing anything that's the key thing about this number two point is that you are either you know i guess you're beating it in every case you know we don't know for sure with the because we don't have stats for the non-extended range version but we'll, we'll do that <laughs> you know i'll make a video when we get there so all right moving on number three this might be one of the coolest 
things ever. Like this should have been number one maybe, but this is going to be the fastest F-150 ever and close to the fastest truck ever made. Now there's other electric trucks like the Rivian that is technically uh, has a faster spec uh, zero to 60 and you know, that's awesome. So, you know, maybe there's a couple that are faster, but for the most part, this might be the fastest truck ever made, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm sure we're going to blow this out of the water when maybe the Cybertruck comes around and, you know, even just the next generations will all get better and better. But for right now, this is going to be one of the fastest trucks ever made. And now I have a couple um, other fast trucks that we can compare it to. So first of all, the Lightning gets about, or it's projected, I guess, technically it's not out yet, but it it's uh, 573 horsepower with 775 pound-feet of torque. That's awesome. Of course, it's electric motor. You should already expect that, but that's going to be pretty fast. Um, now, in comparison, um, that's going to give you about a 4.5 uh, 0 to 60. And now, when we look at the 3.5 turbo v6 power boost hybrid which is one of the fastest engines you could get in f-150 that has about a 5.7 second and then the other fast one uh the twin turbo charged v6 uh is 5.1 seconds so even with you know the raptor that's what that these come in i forget which one comes in the raptor i apologize i'm not that big of a truck guy so you don't have to yell at me in the comments i already admit to it um, <laughs> anyway, that's giving you almost a full second difference. That's how fast this thing's going to be. Um, and now just in comparison, you, we look at the, the twin turbocharged, that's 450 horsepower with 500 pound feet of torque, which is still a friggin' beefcake. Don't get me wrong, but the lightning is gonna, it's just gonna crush it. It's going to be so much fun. Um, now, just for uh, a fun fact, I looked up the old Lightning, the performance version, which was like made to be a fast truck, um, where the this Lightning got its name from, and that zero to sixty time was actually five point two seconds. That thing is quick, and uh, people I think are modding them nowadays and just zooming around. And uh, I bet it's a pretty fun car. I've never been in one. Okay, number four, and now this number four, ugh, I technically counts for any electric car, but if you're new to electric cars. Maybe this will be interesting to you. So, um, no oil changes ever. No gas stations ever. And way less maintenance. Let's look at some stats here. So, uh, the obvious, like I said, no oil changes, no gas. But 35% lower cost in a year just of maintenance. That's pretty awesome. And then you save in gas is about $900. So, any extra cost you know, might be worth actually taking on for this car which I think when we get to my next point, you're going to say, what extra costs? So there's a little tease. <laughs> um, so some interesting options here, actually, because we should talk about charging for a second. Um, you can only spend, like, you can only spend. You will actually only spend, if you're a daily driver and you're not using this for work, about 30 to $50, you can expect that much more in your electric bill if you're charging your car at your house and using it for like average, you know, driving to work and back. That's pretty good projections. I think I'm more than happy to, you know, have that added to my electric bill because I have a, a big old Jeep Grand Cherokee that I just did a weekend trip and I think I spent at least $90 in gas and it wasn't even like a ton of traveling. So uh, can't wait to not have to do that. Now, if you're looking for a couple of charge options for your house and you want to start preparing now before you get your truck, so the, the standard outlet that it comes with has, has two plugs on it, and one is a NEMA that you can get installed, and then the other is your standard house outlet. The difference between the house is it's only going to charge, I think, at like three miles additionally, like in dumb guy terms, which I like to read them in, is every hour of charging you're getting three miles added to your car where that enhanced NEMA outlet is going to get you 20 miles per hour not speed 20 miles added to your battery per hour of charging and then the final thing you can do is you could actually get a smart Ford and in charger installed in your house too which is pretty pretty sweet I think they're only eight hundred dollars and that's going to add 25 um, miles for every hour of charging um, and, oh, I should back up. To get a NEMA outlet installed in your house, 
I've looked around me and it's about if you already have like a washer outlet that they can tap into and, and branch off of or whatever, I think it's only about 200 to 500 dollars to get that installed. So either way, you're gonna have to spend a little bit money to get quicker charging. Okay, so now we're at the fifth and final, like, mind-bending, boggling reason that you should be excited about the F-150 Lightning, and that's the fact that it could actually be cheaper than a ICE F-150, and you've probably heard me talk about this already, but there is a bill that is so close to passing, um, you know, fingers crossed on that, but if it goes through, you could save up to $12,500 off of your Ford Electric Lightning. Ford Electric Lake. I'm a mess today. Let me break that down. So I, the, my particular model is the uh, extended XLT. That's the version of the Lightning that I'm excited about. And it is about $57,000 um, before any discounts. And then of course, tax is added on that. But if we look at that base price, <coughs> the new bill is set out like this. So you have that $57,000, but you're going to get $7,500 off. And I should say these are all point of sale discounts. They're not how it used to be where you would have to have tax liability and then you get the money back at the end of your taxes. This new bill is set to be a point of sale. And that's so huge because, because of this, ready? Um, so you start at $57,000. We're going to deduct $7,500 off of that base price. And you are now at forty nine thousand five hundred. But wait, there's an additional four thousand five hundred because this car is union made. So now we're down to a four thousand or forty five thousand dollar truck. But wait, there's a little bit more because the batteries are U.S. made. Therefore, we are getting this sticker price, that base MSRP, down to forty four thousand five hundred dollars. And that's so cool because the standard. Uh, non-electric F-150 XLT with the same exact, if not maybe a little less to be fair, um, you know, equipment packages and everything is $47,500. So almost three or four K more expensive. Crazy, right? So hearing all this, let's say you don't have your reservation in, um, and you're probably wondering, hey, is it still a good time to order one or put my reservation in or whatever? Um, there's up to well over uh, 150,000 reservations for this car right now. However, if you're not urgently waiting or, or needing a car, I say go ahead and put in your reservation. If you, you can, it's fully refundable, hundred dollars, and you can still, you know, you know, shop for other vehicles or whatever. But I say put it in because it's only going to get better with time. So even if you don't get this car until 2023, there's probably going to be a lot of improvements. It's probably going to be even better by the time that you are ready to get this car or, or eligible or whatever you want to call it. So um, I say, yes, it is still a good time. And everything I just read is only going to get better with time. Except for maybe the tax credit. Who knows what's going to happen to that? That could be here tomorrow, gone the next day. And... I don't I don't what are we going to do, right? Um, so that's all I have. Hopefully you guys found a little bit of enjoyment in this video. I really appreciate all of you guys watching these videos. Thank you so much for being a subscriber to all of you folks. And what else is there to say? I'm grateful. You guys rule. Thank you. Bye.